So in the previous video, we took some time to basically derive everything that we need to know about the unit circle. Uh, so the most important result that we're going to actually use within some examples over the course of this video is within this box right here. Anytime you plot an angle on the unit circle in standard position, the x-coordinate from the point that gets plotted represents cosine of the angle. The y-coordinate from the point that gets plotted represents sine of the angle. So let's go ahead and try to do some problems here real fast. So within this first screen, we've got three problems that you see are already completed that we're going to try to confirm the results for by looking at some coordinates from the unit circle. So we want to try to evaluate cosine of 90 degrees. Yes, if the calculator is in play, make sure it's in degree mode. You can toss in cosine of 90, hit enter. You're going to see an answer of zero. How can the unit circle tell us that answer if we don't have access to a calculator? So what we're going to do is we're going to start by plotting this angle, this 90 degree angle. So you're always going to start on the positive stretch of the x-axis. And if it's a positive angle, you're going to work counterclockwise around the circle. So if I go from the positive stretch of the x-axis directly up to this position right here, there's my 90 degree angle. I'm going to actually put a point, and you see it's already physically shown there. I'm going to put that point on my unit circle. What we just talked about in the previous video, reviewed it 30 seconds ago, is the x coordinate from a point on it on the unit circle corresponds to cosine of the point that we've plotted. The x coordinate of this point, well, we're not moving side to side off of the y axis. So the x coordinate is zero, cosine of that angle is therefore zero. Done. Next question. So now we want to go ahead and try to do the sine of 270. So we've got to start once again by locating that angle. So I like to go in 90 degree increments. So if I go 90 degrees, I'm here. If I go 180 degrees, I'm here. Uh, if I add 90 onto 180, that actually takes me to 270. So that puts me right to the point that you see plotted down beneath the x-axis. So think about what we're trying to do now. We're trying to find sine of that angle. Well, sine of the angle that's plotted in standard position here, this, this large obtuse angle, 270 degrees, that is going to end up being the y-coordinate from the point that's plotted, right? We said the x-coordinate represents cosine, the y-coordinate from the point that we plot represents sine. So I am looking at a circle of radius one centered at zero, zero. Uh, my x-coordinate is, is again, zero, but I don't need cosine this time around. I'm not trying to do cosine of 270. If I was trying to do cosine of 270, my answer would be zero once again. I'm trying to do sine. So I need to think about what the y-coordinate of this point down here is. And the y-coordinate of this point, well, if I just drop down from the center of the circle, and, and I know I didn't really draw my circle perfectly here, uh, but if I just drop down from the center of the circle to this location, this is a radius of the circle. Uh, I would worry about some of my students giving the answer of positive one, since sometimes we get too caught up in the only thing about magnitude. You're in the coordinate plane here. The y-coordinate is clearly negative. The y-coordinate and thus the sine of 270 degrees is therefore going to be negative 1. And then the final one on this screen, let's try to do a negative angle this time around. So we've got cosine of negative 270. So when you plot a negative angle in standard position, you're, you're still starting along the positive stretch of the x-axis. You're just moving the opposite direction around the circle. So for the positive angles that we've just dealt with, we moved counterclockwise around the circle, but when we plot a negative angle, we're actually going to move clockwise. So if I go negative 90, it puts me to here. Negative 90 more puts me to negative 180. Negative 270 is going to put me right here. So I plot that point. I think about which coordinate from that point I need. I'm looking for cosine. I need the x-coordinate of that point. I'm not moving side to side here. The x-coordinate of that point is zero. That's cosine of the angle. So when you're at locations like we've been seeing within this particular sequence of examples, if you have a multiple of a 90 degree angle, super easy to figure out what your answer for sine and cosine are going to be. It's just going to end up being uh, the x or the y coordinate from one of these points, either the one here, the one down here. Uh, I guess another multiple of 90 could put us here or here. Uh, in our third example, we actually kind of ended up back at the first point through a different angle. The unit circle helps directly to evaluate answers for sine and cosine. 
we can still use the unit circle to evaluate some of the other trigonometric ratios. Uh, so after sine and cosine, you'd, you'd probably deal most frequently with the tangent ratio. And then there are the reciprocal ratios, secant, cosecant, and cotangent. We'll go ahead and we'll do a couple more examples on the screen, three more actually. Tangent of 90, secant of 180, and cosecant of negative 270. S step one is, is still really to locate the angle. So I'm going to locate a 90 degree angle, just like we did on the previous screen. We open from the positive x-axis, 90 degrees puts us right there. Now I need to think about what tangent is equal to in terms of sine and cosine. So you've, you've probably called this a trig identity uh, at some point. Tangent can be re-represented as sine divided by cosine. So that's just something that you have to have some familiarity with or, or be able to do some derivation on in order to determine that. Uh, in this case, we'll just kind of run with it. If, if you're one of my students, we've definitely turned tangent into sine divided by cosine a number of times. So tangent is going to equal sine divided by cosine. So to get the answer for tangent of 90, I need to do the sine of 90 degrees divided by the cosine of 90 degrees. So for sine of 90 degrees, think about which coordinate from this point you need. If it's sine, you need the y. The y coordinate is 1. Cosine of 90 degrees is going to be the x-coordinate of that point. The x-coordinate of that point, I'm not moving off of the y-axis at all. The x-coordinate is 0. When you have something that is not 0 and you try to divide by 0, your answer is going to end up being undefined. So tangent of 90 degrees is undefined. You do run that risk a decent amount of the time when you're dealing with any of the other trig functions. Sine and cosine are never going to be undefined. But because the other four trig functions, tangent, secant, cosecant, and the one you don't see here, cotangent, because they all involve fractions, if you end up having a zero sneak into the denominator of that fraction, that's going to be an issue and it's going to cause you to get this undefined result like we just got within that example. So we want to try secant of 180. Uh, step one again, locate the angle, positive angle. So I'm going to move counterclockwise 180 degrees from the positive stretch of the x-axis, which puts me right here. Uh, now for secant, I need to make sure I turn that into the appropriate version of sine and, and cosine. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, right? So when you go from secant and cosecant to the reciprocal versions of, of sine and cosine, the letters invert with each other. Secant has, is the reciprocal of cosine and cosecant is actually the reciprocal of sine. So you have to be careful with that. It's easy to, to think secant and sine are going to be hooked up with each other because they start with the same letter. Same thing for cosecant and cosine, but they definitely invert with each other when you go to these inverse trig functions. Not inverse trig functions. That was definitely the wrong thing for me to say. Reciprocal trig functions. Sorry about that. So to try to finish off this first example, for secant of 180 degrees, we need to take 1 divided by whatever the answer is for cosine of 180 degrees. Well, cosine is going to correspond to the x-coordinate from the point that we plotted on the unit circle. Watch out for your S-I-G-N, positive negative of this x-coordinate. It is 1, but we're definitely moving to the left. Keep in mind, we're in the coordinate plane. So you see I haven't written a 1 in there for cosine of 180 degrees. I've written negative 1. So if I take 1 divided by negative 1, boom, got my answer for secant of 180 degrees, negative 1. And then the final one for this video, cosecant of negative 270 degrees. So once again, start by plotting that angle in standard position. So draw yourself a unit circle, start on the x-axis. Negative angle, we're going to end up going clockwise around the circle. So I have to go 90, 90, a third 90 to get to 270. So that puts me to this location right here. I do need to re-represent cosecant in terms of its appropriate representation involving sine or cosine. I said a few seconds ago, cosecant and sine are reciprocals of each other. So if I just do 1 divided by sine, that's equivalent to cosecant. The angle doesn't change. Uh, so now I once again think, okay, well, which coordinate from this point do I need to use to help me establish my answer this time around? I'm looking for sine. Sine corresponds to the y-coordinate of a point on the unit circle. The y-coordinate at this location right here is positive 1. 1 divided by positive 1 gives us positive 1. So that is how you can use the unit circle to evaluate any type of trigonometric ratio that you see that involves a multiple of 90 degree angles. In the next several videos, we're going to focus on some angles that are a little bit more troublesome to deal with. We're going to talk about some multiples of 30 degree angles, some multiples of 45 degree angles, and some multiples of 60 degree angles.